One of the most fan-favored villains in Dragon Ball is the character of Cell. From first form to perfection, he provided entertainment for millions of people around the world and represents a lot more than just the time-traveling android that happens to be bug-like and later on becomes this almost Marvel Comics-esque supervillain until he was defeated at the end of the Cell games. On this special edition of Dragon Ball in Death, we analyze evil, we analyze Cell, as this will serve as a sequel to the History of Cell video, because this time we're gonna go into not his backstory and not his past. Instead, here we're gonna look at the psychology behind Cell, we're gonna look at why I refer to Cell as a narcissist, what that actually means, and Toriyama's ideas behind him. By the end of this video, you will know more about Cell than you did before watching, and that's pretty much a promise coming from me. Concordingly, because this will serve as an epilogue for the last Dragon Ball in Death, make sure that you go back and watch the History of Cell Dragon Ball in Death video because that's going to bring you up to date on the character, its origins, and is a companion piece to this one. Without any further ado, let's go. A few months ago, I did a video on the channel called The History of Cell. It was a 32 minute video where we went through the entire story of Cell's creation from Toriyama's perspective and also in the actual story all the way through to Cell Max. And in the middle part of that video when I'm discussing Cell's personality, I discussed that Cell was a narcissist. Now, I think a lot of people might not really know what that word means or might not have a real good understanding of what it means because to learn about this kind of stuff involves doing research into real world psychology. And when I made the video, I made the mistake of maybe assuming that people knew what I was referencing and many of you did, but some of you did not. So I'm making this video as sort of a follow up to that video, kind of like a little bonus section of the history of Cell. Um, you can call it that if you want to, because I want to discuss Cell's narcissism, what it means. And really his narcissism is part of what makes him such an interesting and compelling villain. Toriyama is definitely not an idiot when it comes to creating these characters. You can say a lot of things about the man all you want to, but he's a very intelligent man when it comes to understanding people. And the reason why Dragon Ball is so big is because all the characters are different and they are reflections of real world people. Narcissism, and specifically NPD, which is narcissistic personality disorder is a very real condition that a lot of people have, and many of them are born with it or they develop it early in life. Cell is very much based on this. Now, I don't know if Toriyama was the kind of person who read up on psychology. Granted, he definitely knew something. He had knowledge, but I don't recall in any interview him actually saying that he studied psychology for a long time, but he definitely knew how to write interesting characters, especially back during the Dragon Ball and Z era. So I want to discuss the narcissism. Now, first of all, I want to discuss what this actually is and some of the, I guess you can say some of the warning signs or symptoms of narcissism. Now, I'm going to put them right there on your screen right now so you can take a look. Now, we're going to talk more about this in detail, but it says feelings of grandiosity being superior. This is from healthdirect.com. Fantasizing about power, beauty, success, and intelligence. Exaggerating achievements and abilities. Constantly seeking uh, attention and admiration. Being uh, sensitive to stress. Superiority, specifically towards people perceived as lower in status. All of these things are qualifications for narcissistic people. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Well, wait a minute, Geekdom. Doesn't that apply to a lot of Dragon Ball villains? Yes, it does. The difference is that while other villains have aspects of narcissism, they're not narcissistic like Cell is. Cell's entire purpose from his programming to you know, both from Dr. Garrow and from the supercomputer was to make himself perfect. His programming was absorb 17 and 18. In the meantime, absorb other living beings, take their energy, convert it into fuel. And by the way, that term fuel is going to come up again later in this video because I really want to give you 
I really want to paint the picture right of what this actually is and what's going on. The word fuel is used a lot when it comes to narcissism, but we'll discuss that a bit more in the future. So, or in this video. So Cell is without question the most narcissistic character in the series. You could make an argument that Zamasu might be, but Zamasu was always a combination of Frieza and Cell. Frieza is a sociopathic genocidal lunatic who's also a spoiled brat he's not quite narcissistic but he does have a lot of the same traits uh being a sociopath and being a narcissist are not exactly the same thing but they're kind of in the same cluster of personality disorders if we go to the dsm manual which goes over all of this these are called cluster b's you've got borderline personality disorder you've got obviously narcissistic personality disorder you've got histrionic personality disorder and then you've got antisocial personality disorder now antisocial personality disorder i want to clarify this for you guys this is not being socially awkward or being an introvert do not get that confused please don't antisocial personality disorder is sort of a synonym or a similarity to being a psychopath but they just can't say that now because the rules of the medical industry, mental health industry have changed. So you can't call somebody a quote unquote psycho anymore because obviously that implies that they are murderers. Or they do really bad things. And usually they're very sick people, but they're not all murderers. So if you ever hear somebody say antisocial or antisocial personality disorder, it does not mean introversion however words do get changed and on the internet people don't know what they're talking about so if someone says you're antisocial they're gonna think you just don't like being in a crowd and that's not what being antisocial and what 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 apd actually is i wanted to clarify that for you guys frieza he has antisocial personality disorder people that have this the reason why it's called antisocial they're, they're literally anti-life you understand what i'm saying they don't care about anything but themselves and in frieza's case we've seen and heard him wipe out entire civilizations without caring cell notice that cell doesn't really feel the same way as frieza notice that his entire goal is to become perfect because it's in his programming but he doesn't really want to just kill everybody on earth he's not really that big into that like frieza was frieza got off on that Cell, on the other hand, just wanted to become perfect, and that's why he created the Cell Games. He called the Cell Games a tournament, even though it was basically just a person taking turns against him. You know, Mr. Satan was first, then of course Goku, and then of course Gohan. The plan was for Cell to fight everyone again. Trunks, Vegeta, Piccolo, but ultimately it wound up being Gohan, his third opponent, to take him out. So Cell didn't get what he wanted, but that was the entire point was to test his body because he wanted to prove that his perfect body was better than Goku, Vegeta, Trunks, everyone. He had a lot of their cells, so he's basically proving that He's a combination of all of them and better than all of them, which is very much a narcissistic trait. If you look at the DSM manuals, there's a lot of things there about like unrealistic goal setting, expecting constant praise. That's why he was on television telling everybody about the Cell games. He likes the attention. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's him. That's Cell. Notice also one of the DSM points of of being a narcissist is great pride in the accomplishment of children or family and we know for a fact that cell did have children the cell juniors and wasn't he enjoying himself when the cell juniors were attacking the z fighters you see what i'm saying like toriyama without question based cell off of a narcissistic person again i cannot confirm if he read any books on psychology but he certainly knows how to write a compelling character as i mentioned zamasu was kind of a bit of a mix of cell and frieza because zamasu was basically a narcissistic sociopath he wanted to kill everyone including other gods like he was so angry at these 
Ningen, these mortals trying to compare themselves to him. You know, he really had a literal God complex because he is a God and he wanted to rule over all the gods and destroy them. We know this from the series. So he's got sort of the worst aspects of Frieza and Cell. However, I do feel like Frieza and Cell are better villains as far as writing goes because, of course, not only were they first to appear before Zamasu, but also I feel like Toriyama at the time he was writing the original Dragon Ball story, not Super, but back in the day, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, he was able to flesh these characters out so much more than Zamasu got fleshed out. And to me, that created a stronger connection with his readers than Zamasu did. I mean, let's be honest, when you look at favorite villains in Dragon Ball Z, a lot of people pick Frieza or Cell. Like, it's, it's there. It's usually those two. Some will pick Goku Black, and that's fine. But usually you're going to get Frieza or Cell. And Broly, too. Different story. But I feel like Cell is one of the most fascinating ones because Toriyama literally took inspiration from what, a problem that real human beings are either born with or they develop early in life. Narcissists usually develop early in life, although there have been studies, controversial ones, that say that you can develop things like this throughout your life. Now, once again, you're probably wondering, but Geekdom, Vegeta is like that. The difference between Cell and Vegeta. And this might have to do with the fact that Cell was programmed and he's not really, he has he has free, free will, but he's obviously been programmed mission parameters by the supercomputer. Obviously, because we see him do it. Vegeta changed. Yes, it happened in the Boo Saga after Cell was dead. And yes, F Vegeta was a total dick for a big portion of Dragon Ball Z. We all know that and some love it. That's fair. Vegeta's a cool character, but he actually changed. He actually became a family man. He learned to care about people more than just his own power. That tells me he was not born with NPD. Cell, on the other hand, was programmed with it, so nothing would ever change him, and he's never going to get better. He's one of those villains that can only be redeemed if they change his character which is why he's never going to get redeemed. I mean, that's probably why he never came back in Superhero because what's there to do with the character? Instead, we had the big, you know, robotic Cell Max that was just out of control as opposed to like a more fleshed out character. But you can't flesh out Cell, the original Cell, in just the movie. You got to have like a manga or an anime to kind of, you know, tell the whole story. And that to me is what makes him so much more interesting than Cell Max, in my opinion, of course. As I mentioned in the History of Cell video, I mentioned that when Cell got desperate, when he was battling the unstoppable Gohan, he started using all of the tricks that didn't work, busting out everyone else's techniques and also even growing his body to do like what Trunks did with his grade three form, but it would slow down his speed. Same mistakes that like other characters have made. Vegeta, of course, made the mistake of letting Cell become perfect. And ironically enough, which by the way, I love this writing point. Toriyama did a great job with this. Great job. I love Toriyama from back in the day. But ironically, he allowed Gohan, once he heard that Gohan had a hidden power, he allowed him to go SS2 by threatening to kill everyone and destroying 16. Gohan did it. And that was the biggest mistake of Cell's life. So ultimately, his own overconfidence really caught up with him. And unfortunately, people that have NPD are super insecure. Sometimes it could happen if it can grow inside of people if they're abused at home, if there's parents that like either give them too much or don't give them enough, or if they're like attention seekers. I also feel like the internet might be creating more narcissists because of kind of the idea behind social media and what attention on social media can do for people nowadays, but that's a deeper topic. I don't want to go that deep into that. That's a whole other, you know, video. So remember earlier in the video when I mentioned the word fuel, and I told you to keep that in mind for later. Let's talk about fuel and how Toriyama cleverly uses this as a story device to create the character of Cell. Now, if you're wondering what I mean by fuel, if you study the works of Mr. H.G. Tudor, who has multiple books and his own YouTube channel, in fact, so check it out. He's got an awesome voice, so check him out over there. Tudor is a diagnosed and self-aware 
narcissistic sociopath and he makes videos about narcissism and what to watch out for and the characteristics of people like this and he discussed something called fuel fuel is what a narcissist lives on now fuel can be different things in life fuel can be attention fuel can be sex fuel can be money, fuel can even be affection and love. Now, obviously you're probably wondering, well, doesn't every human being on earth want affection and love? Most of them do, but when it comes to a narcissist, it's a bit different because the thing about narcissism is that they don't care if they give the love back. If there's love between you and your spouse or you and your family and both partners make an effort to make the relationship better and to keep the love going that's healthy but with a narcissist oftentimes what happens is he preys on what's called a codependent or an empath and you'll often see relationships where one partner's a narcissist and the other one's an empath because they sort of feed off of each other's mental state it's Kind of sad, but also very interesting because there's a lot of people who are like this and don't even realize it. Now, why am I talking about this right now? Because Toriyama takes the concept of fuel and in a very clever way makes it more of a literal statement. Cell, when he first appears in his first form, needs fuel, namely energy, namely power, and he gets it by absorbing and sucking off pause humans and taking their power and that's how he was able to boost himself in power and then of course he would absorb 17 and 18 so Toriyama literally takes the sort of psychological psychoanalytical definition of the word fuel and uses it in a literal sense and he does it purely to validate this idea that Cell is a narcissist Toriyama knew what he was writing he knew what was up and he told the story so brilliantly and connected things together so eloquently with the Cell character that it's almost mind-boggling that I didn't see this until very recently. And many of you who have been longtime Dragon Ball fans since you were kids probably didn't even think that it was a metaphor. And some of you might think I'm looking too much into it, and perhaps I am. He's never commented about this in an interview that I know of, but nevertheless, it's kind of a very interesting connection that makes logical sense when it comes to creating a character that is a narcissist Toriyama may have wanted to include every aspect and variable of what these people actually are but in a fictional sense and I love that about the character of Cell because it makes him unique and interesting he is not a one-dimensional villain and that's to me, a great thing. If you find this type of stuff interesting, I do encourage you to look into reading books and maybe articles on narcissism and what it actually is because you'll find that a lot of great villains follow this sort of uh, pathway and Cell is one that pretty much embodies a narcissist. So as we analyze evil today on this edition of Dragon Ball In-Death, we remember that Cell is a lot cooler and a lot more real than people understand because there are people like him in the real world the only difference is they don't have everyone else's powers and more importantly they can't destroy a solar system thank you for watching